Hi guys, we meet again. In this video, we are going to be discussing chapter number 7 still, mutation, but we are going to be focusing on chromosomal mutation, change in the chromosomal number, specifically on euploidy, or in other words, polyploidy, which is a condition where an individual has extra sets of chromosomes. Euploidy or polyploidy can be divided into two types. The first one is autopolyploidy, which is a condition when individual having more than two sets of chromosomes, because we are diploid individual, most of us, so we have two sets of chromosomes. But for autopolyploidy, they have more than two sets of chromosomes. But the extra sets that they have come just from a single parent species. For example, like this one, as you can see, these zygotes come from the self-fertilization of two unreduced gametes of this species. Since the gametes are not reduced, this zygote now contain extra sets of chromosome. Becoming 4N or having four sets of chromosome from initially just having two sets of chromosome. Or 2n. And as you can see, it only involves single species, hence auto polyploidy, or auto, in other words, also refer to self. The second type of euploidy or polyploidy is known as allopolyploidy. And as you might have guessed, if auto polyploidy only involves a single species, allopolyploidy involves two usually closely related species. Okay, so let's have a look at the definition of allopolyploidy. It is a condition when an individual having sets of chromosomes originating from two different species. So how does this condition arise? How can an individual carry an extra set of chromosomes? As we have seen earlier on, that individual must have developed from the union of one normal gamete and one unreduced gamete, although it's not necessarily the case because we have seen earlier on it can also be between two unreduced gametes. So how does this unreduced gamete come to be? It is because of non-disjunction to the whole set of chromosomes. The whole set of chromosomes fail to separate during gametogenesis. Take this situation for example. You have to remember the rules. If the chromosome sets are in multiple of two, the individual will become fertile. If the chromosome sets are not in multiple of two, the individual will become sterile or infertile. Let's have a look at situation A. The F1 generation arises from the fusion between one normal gamete and one unreduced gamete, causing the F1 generation to be triploid to have three sets of chromosomes and it is not in multiple of two so the f1 generation will become sterile or infertile why sterile this is because there is not enough homologous pair of chromosome therefore that individual cannot undergo meiosis and therefore cannot produce gamete that's why that individual is sterile for situation b the F1 generation is produced by the fertilization of two unreduced gametes, causing the F1 generation to become tetraploid. The chromosome sets are in multiple of two, so therefore the F1 generation becomes fertile. What if the sterile plant possesses the qualities that we like? So how do we propagate a sterile plant? We can do this by either doing vegetative propagation like stem cuttings or we can develop a new plant from tissue culture method. But how to make the sterile plant fertile? By inducing chromosome doubling in that plant. So take this F1 sterile triploid, we can induce chromosome doubling in this plant to produce F2 fertile hexaploid and how do we manipulate the F1 sterile triploid to undergo chromosome doubling? By exposing it to a mutagen, for example, colchicine. Colchicine is a mutagen that degrades spindle fiber. 
causing the whole set of chromosome to occur non-disjunction, causing the whole set of chromosome to fail to separate. Cell now will have twice as much set of chromosome as compared to the original cell. This is an example. This side is not being treated with colchicine. This side has been treated with colchicine. All the cells are now 4N instead of the original 2N only and the size of the leaves and the fruits become bigger. In the case of allopolyploidy, it is between two different but often closely related species and you have to be very careful when we talk about allopolyploidy. For example, take these two parents here. We have one of Anus 2N18 chromosome and we have Brassica 2N also equal to 18 chromosomes. But when fertilization happens, the total number of chromosomes comes back to normal. But I am sure many of you would be confused as to why the F1 hybrid becomes sterile. This diagram will explain it better. We have species A and we represent the defect condition or the chromosome set with AA and we have species B who represent the chromosome set with BB. Gamete formation as normal and fertilization happen even though the chromosomal number comes back to the original total but this F1 is sterile because it is made up of two different sets of chromosomes. We have set A and set B. Still, there is no homologous chromosome. That's why the F1 generation becomes sterile. Why sterile? This is because the F1 generation have no homologous chromosome, therefore cannot undergo meiosis, thus cannot produce gametes. So how do we turn the F1 generation to become fertile, we induce chromosome doubling by exposing it to mutagens such as cofusine. Allopolyploidy also happen naturally in the wild. From my reading, there are some species that skip this stage. When this zygote is produced, this zygote will automatically undergo chromosome doubling and result in the production of fertile hybrid. However, in some other plant species, this F1 will undergo mutation, will undergo chromosome doubling, and some part of that plant will suddenly become fertile.